they and some other people that that uh, do this, they make a mistake and say something about the, the shareholders voting. Uh, it, it says at the 2021 annual meeting, this is part of their supporting proposal, where a significant majority of non-inside shareholders supported the similar version of this resolution. Well, we say in our response, the proponents' assertion that at the 2021 annual meeting, a significant majority of non-inside shareholders supported a similar resolution is incorrect. In fact, a significant majority of such shareholders did not support the proposal. That's either true or false. And you know, I have the, the last report submitted by that same firm and that handles our material and at, uh, at, at uh, Broadmoor, what is it, Broadbridge. And uh, it reports the number of shareholders. It's the, the last day before the voting or something like that. And it's got the, the number of, of shareholders that, that sub, support us and are against us. And it's, it's four to one in our favor and something like that. And, and it just doesn't make any difference to them. I mean, it, it, it's fascinating to me that <laughs> uh, And, you know, it, it, uh, I, I, would, I would be willing to wager somebody, if we could find an impartial judge, that if you go to any group you want to pick, let's take the CEOs of the five leading utility companies in the United States, the CEOs of the 10 League, and ask them, you know, whether, whether Berkshire Hathaway Energy has been a, a leader in in the field of renewables and so on, and they'd all say yes, but, but essentially you've got a, a group of people that, that uh, write us letters and say we want to be, we want you to do things our way, and you've got three million other shareholders, but forget about them and spend some money on this and, and have a meeting with us, and here's our way of measuring it. And, and, Admittedly, we've got all kinds of information up about what we've done, and they can come out to Iowa and look around, and it is the, it is the, it is the renewables capital of the world, practically, and we're the ones that have done it. And, and uh, uh, they just, that isn't what they want. <laughs> uh, so, I like, you know, I'm for shareholder democracy and all that sort of thing, but the answer is that the resolution and, you know, they pay lots of money to somebody that probably works in these groups, and they've got groups of the, you know, they, they've got their way of doing it. I get letters from, from institutions in Europe, and they say, well, you know, you've got, you may have 40 pages or a history of going back to 2006 of explaining what you're doing, but here's what we, the way we want you to do it, and, you know, and, you know. How much energy is granules, which we own, is it, it, it's just it, 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 you have to think, you know, as a person sitting here, and almost, you know, it, it's 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 nutty, but it's these are the rules. You get on the proxy statement under certain circumstances. Most companies they don't want a lot of resolutions, so it's just easier for them to, you know, set up a department. And uh, you know, pay a bunch of people to pay attention to him, just like Warren did when he flew across the whole country because he had it wasn't money. I just I was worried about a, a company surviving that that the people in Washington, the supervisor, were worried about it surviving. And and uh, and uh, if I came, if I flew across country and and uh, uh, paid them sufficient respect, I mean it was. Kind of like the Godfather or something, you know. I just bought out and then flew back. But uh, so I, I have a certain reservation about about uh, uh, shareholder proposals should have some meaning. I mean, I, I it's kind of thing I argued for when I was younger. But you know, basically, it's become, uh, in my opinion, uh, there are certain items that you can put on the ballot and certain that you can't, and Practically every executive in the country now, the chief executive wants to have a virtual meeting. The last thing you want to have is shareholders and people stand up and propose things. And we'll just keep talking about it the way we see it is. And in the end, we will have a report 
as to the boat and uh, this time. And, and I can assure you, we're not, we're not stuffing the ballot box. This, you know, we're not doing anything. I mean, voter fraud, you know, it, it, uh, it's not like Chicago in the old days where you waited for the cemetery vote to come in and or that sort of thing. <laughs> we, we don't count the votes. You know, we don't say where they come from. We don't know where they come from. But we can tell when two or three institutions have got huge amounts of shares, but they're one, one or, and they, they vote a certain way, and then they feel pure, and they don't really, what they care about is whether we check their boxes and the people that work for them. A certain number of people are getting employed by them, and, and, and their hearts are pure, uh, but ours aren't impure. <laughs> and uh, uh, with that, I think we ought to, uh, well, I, I won't do this again, but I, 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 it, it just, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a really interesting uh, development in terms of getting more a rules-based type of situation where basically every, you know, no company, almost every company, figures out how to negotiate with the people, laid up, and they all have con uh, a good many of the CEOs. I mean, they don't, they just figure it's something that they endure in the business, and they, they set up a department to, to answer the questions and meet with the people and show them the proper respect and, and so on. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's um, being done to, to uh, carry through on something which I think the, uh, the substance of is, is, is pretty silly. If I, thought, if I thought Berkshire Hathaway Energy was behaving in a way that was bad for society, worse than other utility companies, but no company. And the reason, of course, is that we don't take dividends out of it. So we, we pub tens of billions of dollars into the business. Most, most, in fact, every utility pays out the dividends. And it's not the fault of the utility management. That's just a policy that's been the case in the utility industry. But they don't really have much cash left over. And we have plenty of cash, and we'll put in more cash, and we'll, we're willing to build, you know, whatever amount of transmission lines and all kinds of things that would be helpful to the country. And, and, uh, and we're doing a fair amount of it, but we could do a whole lot more and we're better positioned to do it, really, than, than any utility company in the country. And I think if you talk to other utility executives, I don't advise you to go and met, put them on the spot or anything, but you know, they would agree. But they also know that their life is easier if they just have somebody to, to take care of uh, people that want to be catered to, basically. And I catered to them. And, the time of Solomon in 1991, because 8,000 people were working there, and, and, and John McFarland was trying to raise a billion dollars a day, and, and the Treasury and the Fed and the SEC wanted us to stay alive. And in effect, uh, uh, that caused me to go and pay my respects to the Godfather, and I came back. But I do think a little background is kind of interesting on this. And with that, we'll, we'll ask Ms. Amick. Uh, can you give your report? My report is ready. The ballot of the proxy holders in response to proxies that were received through last Thursday evening cast 127,214 votes for the motion and 370,415 votes against the motion. As the number of votes against the motion exceeds a majority of the number of votes of all Class A and Class B shares properly cast on the matter, the motion has failed. The certification required by Delaware law of the precise count of the votes given to the secretary to be placed with the minutes of this meeting. Yeah, and I will just add that, you know, I got a report a day or two ago, the last report they sent me from, from this firm, and, and that's, Four to one or five, they want to be glad to share it with anybody. But anyway, in terms of the number of shareholders that are, number of shareholders that based on what these people in New Jersey tell me the vote was, uh, we're, we're against it. 
and uh, you know, it's, and if they would reintroduce the proposal next year, I just hope they leave that line out because it, it, uh, I would just uh, uh, suggest that uh, uh, somebody read what the proposal is <laughs> or what the facts are before they 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 spend they, they announce their. Proposals and all that sort of thing. Okay, well, the third proposal requests that the company issue a report addressing if and, if and how it intends to measure and disclose and reduce GHG emissions associated with its underwriting, insuring, and investing activities. The directors will recommend that the shareholders vote against the proposal. I will now recognize Jalen Spen, representative of Whistle Stop Capital, to present the proposal. Chairman, Mr. Buffett and board members. Good afternoon. My name is Jalen Spann, and I want to first thank you for the opportunity to present proposal number four on behalf of shareholder representative As You So. This proposal asks Berkshire to measure, disclose, and begin reducing the greenhouse gas emissions supported by its insuring, underwriting, and investment activities. In its most simple terms, the proposal asks Berkshire to take responsibility for its contribution to climate change. The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission has acknowledged that climate change can impair the productive capacity of the national economy. The litany of national and global events associated with climate change, the fires in California and Colorado, the floods across the Midwest, the growing strength of hurricanes, the deep freeze in Texas, to name just a few, demonstrate the growing risk and costs of climate change. 2021 was the second most costly year on record for the world's insurers, with insured losses totaling $120 billion from natural catastrophes. Significantly, these losses can no longer be categorized as simply a bad year. As noted by Munich RE, economic losses caused by natural catastrophes are trending upward. The insurance industry faces year-on-year -year growth in insured losses related to climate change. Berkshire is not only exposed to climate-related risks but it is actively amplifying these risks through its continued investment in and underwriting of high carbon activities. Berkshire is one of the largest providers of coverage to the oil and gas industry, surpassing peers such as Chubb and Liberty Mutual. Its shareholdings in coal alone amounts to $5.1 billion, once again, far surpassing its American peers. A financial institution's investment and underwriting activities are by far the greatest source of its total carbon footprint, highlighting the need for Berkshire to measure, disclose, and begin taking responsibility for the emissions it enables. The global financial sector is rising to the challenge of meeting the Paris Agreement's goal to maintain global temperature rise at 1.5 degrees Celsius. The Net Zero Insurance Alliance has grown to 22 members, seven of which are in the top 30 largest global insurers by market cap. All members have committed to reach net zero emissions from their insurance and reinsurance underwriting portfolios by 2050. AIG and the Hartford have also recently committed to reach net zero emissions from their underwriting and investment portfolios by 2050 or sooner. Berkshire is lagging both its American and its European peers a position that increases climate risk globally and to its own portfolios. The insurance industry, and Berkshire specifically, has a key role to play in the ongoing low-carbon transition. And we believe Berkshire has the ability to become a climate leader on this critical issue. And the first steps are to quantify the emissions associated with its underwriting and investing activities 
disclose those emissions, and begin developing plans to reduce those emissions in alignment with the Paris Goal. To ensure global success in protecting this planet and its inhabitants, every business must take responsibility for its own contribution to climate change. And we look forward to working with Berkshire to address this vital issue. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Ben. The um, motion is now ready to be acted upon if there are any shareholders voting in person. They should now, how about a little light up here? They should now mark their proposal. <laughs> uh, they're about on the, on the motion. Ms. Amick, when you are ready, you may give your report. My report is ready. The ballot of the proxy holders in response to proxies that were received through last Thursday evening cast 127,065 votes for the motion and 370,630 votes against the motion. As the number of votes against the motion exceeds a majority of the number of the votes of all Class A and Class B shares properly cast on the matter, the motion has failed. The certification required by the Delaware law of the precise count of the votes given to the secretary to be placed with the minutes of this meeting. Thank you, Ms. Amick. Proposal fails. The fourth proposal requests that the company report to shareholders on the outcome of the diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. The directors are recommended that the shareholders vote against the proposal. I will now recognize Jalen Spann, representative of the Whistle Stop, to present the proposal. Hello, I'm Jalen Spann. I'm speaking on behalf of the nonprofit advocacy organization As You So and Whistle Stop Capital. I formally move proposal number five, asking for Berkshire Hathaway to report on the outcomes of their diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts by publishing quantitative data on their workforce composition and recruitment, retention, and promotion rates of employees by gender, race, and ethnicity. Warren Buffett once mentioned that he had grown up with two sisters who, to quote Mr. Buffett, are absolutely smart as I am and better personalities. He also bravely admitted that he only placed women on his board after his wife suggested it in 2003, 40 years after he started his company. It's one thing to know that people of all genders, races, and ethnicities can contribute to Berkshire Hathaway. It is another thing entirely to intentionally and proactively create the space, opportunity, and training needed within a company for those people to be able to contribute without facing harassment and discrimination. In the absence of data, we must instead assume that Berkshire Hathaway companies are no better nor any worse than any company in America. The statistics for American companies are unacceptable, particularly when we consider the strong link found by the Wall Street Journal, McKinsey, Credit Suisse, and others between diversity, equity, and inclusion programs and corporate outperformance. 42% of Americans have witnessed or experienced racism at work. 64% of black employees say that discrimination is an issue in their own workplace. Many people of color are barred from entering the workplace at all. A meta study reviewing data from 1989 to 2017 found that on average, whites receive 24% more callbacks than blacks and 36% more callbacks than Latinos. If we take a look at Berkshire's executive team, we can see that headquarters should be proud of the gender and racial diversity present in its leadership team. The culture that exists at Berkshire Hathaway headquarters appears to be one that recruits, hires, promotes, and retains diverse employees. Mr. Buffett stresses the importance of culture and the value that it has on the long-term success of a company. 
He said that culture, more than rule books, determines how an organization behaves. Investors are looking for assurances that this culture is successfully implemented within the famously decentralized Berkshire Hathaway companies as well. In order to allow their investors to understand their workplace diversity, 87 of the S&P 100 companies have released or have committed to releasing their EEO1 form, which is a standardized government mandated accounting of gender, race, and ethnicity breakdown by employment levels. By contrast, of the more than 60 companies Berkshire owns, only one has publicly released this form, one company. This is not the leadership that Mr. Buffett is known for. The company's inclusion data, the hiring, retention, and promotion rates of diverse employees must also be shared for investors to have a full understanding of the actual experience of not only Berkshire's employees, but of its portfolio company's employees as well. The board has released insufficient information to assure investors that it is attentive to diversity, equity, and inclusion at Berkshire Hathaway companies. We encourage transparency, even in the face of imperfection, in order to show that the company's leaders are truly committed to change and to attracting, retaining, and promoting the best possible employees. Thank you. I certainly agree with you that, that uh, my sisters were better looking, smarter, had better personalities, and in 1930, uh, had a father and mother, teachers who loved them like uh, they loved me. And if I'd been born female, black, in various other countries, I would not have had remotely the life I've enjoyed. But uh, I, uh, if, if what the people at the top believe is important in terms of how our subsidiaries behave, they certainly, there's everybody that runs any one of our subsidiaries knows how I feel. And they also know that they're in charge of their own business. And uh, that uh, we think we've got great leaders in every, virtually every company we have. Every now and then, we find we've made a mistake, obviously. But uh, if uh, the idea that I should replace any of the people that run, run the businesses. And they're doing it. I, 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 uh, I just don't think that's the way to, to operate. And uh, I will tell you, just so that the question doesn't come up later, in terms of our shareholders, by, again, a four or five to one vote. So the owners of the Berkshire company, whether not forgetting about, forgetting about A or B shares, you know, basically the big funds that uh, are worried about what their perception is, and, but also may well believe it. Who knows what people's motivations are? Somebody said that the word motivation should never be used in the singular because you really don't know. But the one thing is that it's very hard to find people that uh, uh, are running big institutions that, uh, you know, are acting against their self-interest. Now, it doesn't mean they're acting for their self-interest necessarily. They're acting for a lot of reasons. But uh, uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that if, I could, if, if you could change that in people, it would do a lot more for American, Americans in the future. But you can't basically can't change that. I mean, it's a situation of how 
people behave in protecting essentially their own interests and, and their own interests uh, 40 or 50 years ago was uh, uh, essentially to regard corporate America as a boys club and, and that's not acceptable anymore so they changed but they haven't changed as much by a substantial margin in relation to to, uh, to blacks I mean, uh, that's where we are as a society but Overwhelmingly, uh, uh, our shareholders don't don't agree with you. Even though they had a chance to, uh, you gave them a chance to express their view on it. So, uh, Ms. Amick, when you're ready, you may give your report. My report is ready. The ballot of the proxy holders in response to proxies that were received through last Thursday evening cast 123,614 votes for the motion and 373,925 votes against the motion. As the number of votes against the motion exceeds a majority of the number of votes of all Class A and Class B shares properly cast on the matter, the motion has failed. The certification required by Delaware law of the precise count of the votes given to the secretary to be placed with the minutes of this meeting. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Proposal fails. I move that this meeting be adjourned. I second the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.